Welcome to Easy Eats. My name is Chef Yves Deschain, and today we're in the Greener Village's Learning Kitchen with Kevin Lebeuf, owner of Educated Beers. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for having me. Really excited about learning right today. Right on. Awesome. So today we're going to be making focaccia bread. So uh, I was told that you're somewhat of a foodie as well as uh, an educated beard. Yeah, exactly. I, I love I love food of of all types, any country, and uh, I've never made focaccia, so I'm super excited to, to learn from you. Right on, so well, well, let's get started. So this recipe I got from one of uh, my fellow bakers here in Fredericton. Um, she, I was helping her with a few caterings, and uh, we were making pizzas, and she's like, here, whip this together. And I was like, this is fantastic, what is it? She's like, it's my version of focaccia. It's not the authentic focaccia, it's uh, definitely uh, a version adapted for, I guess, the industry to make it quick and easy, and it's now my go-to pizza dough because I like a big fluffy pizza crust I guess awesome so I'll show you how so that and I'm saying that because today we're weighing these ingredients there we go as I was saying so this recipe is kind of weighed out so a lot of baking recipes are weighed out because baking is science mm -hmm. or chemistry and cooking is more of an art not to say that art in baking doesn't exist but you need those reactions to happen in baking. Um, the focaccia is super forgiving, but at the same time, um, I weigh out the ingredients because that's the recipe that I have. So we're gonna start off with 600 grams of warm water. So it needs to be a little bit warmer, or as warm as your tap will give you, I guess. Um, when you put your finger in, uh, it's just a little bit warmer than body temperature. So about 45 degrees if we're talking science here. So we're gonna add that. 600 grams right here and to that I'm going to add uh, 50 grams of yeast now dry active yeast uh, you can use caked yeast but this is the easiest way to get yeast at the grocery store is just your Fleischmann's or whatever you see on the counter yep. the, gra the brown bottle we're gonna put in 50 grams of yeast just like that and that's pre-measured and it's pre-measured okay. absolutely I pre-measured gotcha. for the show but yeah we just measure out 50 grams um, and then go from there. And then to that, I'm going to add uh, 100 grams of olive oil. So focaccia bread has a lot of olive oil. So a good quality of olive oil is always what you're looking for, uh, or whatever's on sale. <laughs> this is usually my rule of thumb. And then all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to give this a quick mix, just so the yeast has a chance to, uh, to dissolve itself into the thing. So you're gonna notice that this recipe doesn't have any sugar, so we're not going to bloom the yeast. The yeast okay. is going to uh, bloom and use the sugars from the flour and all that other stuff to bloom. There we go. And then I'm going to add a one kg, so zero this out. I'm gonna add one kg of flour, a thousand grams of flour. You're gonna notice that I didn't add any salt to this so usually when you make bread it's usually flour yeast water oil and salt yeah um, I'm not using salt in this one because I'm going to be using some rock salt or some sea salt to put over the top as a garnish Got and it. that's going to be super salty so we don't want to have it overly salted so if you choose not to put that in there it's usually probably about 30 grams of salt give or take also awesome. two tablespoons yeah so just for the viewers uh, what does blooming mean blooming well it's like a flower, right? It, it breaks open and it starts to develop. So yeast is a living organism. And what we're doing when you get it in those jars or in the, in the bag is that it's resting or it's sleeping dormant, it's hibernating. So what we wanna do is we wanna wake it up. And activate it. And activate it. Gotcha. And the culinary term or the official term is blooming it. So it kind of, and, and you can see it when it hits the water, it's those little round little balls and then it starts to foam up and starts to work out and that's called the bloom. Awesome. All right, so right here, we are done. We're just gonna put our scale off to the side and now it gets to the part where we're going to mix it, okay? It's super simple. All we're gonna do is you get your hand in here like this and then you just kind of work it off the side just like this until everything is nice and incorporated. You can use a machine for this, but I mean, it's no fun. We're only making one batch. If we were making a whole bunch, then I would. And all we're gonna do is just kind of bring it together until you get a nice soft dough. So let's say you were making this with like added flavors that you wanted, like rosemary, would this be at the point where you'd add it? 
Uh, no, uh, well, I guess so. It all depends on how you want to incorporate these flavors. Okay. Say, you're right, if we want to add cheese or anything like that and make it a cheese focaccia or we want to add some olives and stuff, yeah, absolutely, now's the time. Or you can use them as a garnish over the top. So it doesn't have to be into the dough. You'll notice that when we're going to uh, form the dough, we can incorporate flavors that way. There's gotcha. kind of two different ways. So if you wanted like a herbed focaccia, like heavy herbed, then yeah, I would put my dry herbs or my fresh herbs in right now. Cool. But all we're going to do, and it's not like a uh, regular dough, we're just going to bring this together until it comes together into a nice soft ball. So, and if there's a little bit leaving on, I, like, like I used to call her, my grandmother used to call the angel share. Yeah. That's okay. It's uh, it's going to be a sticky dough. And we're just going to bring it together until it's nice and smooth. I always say smooth like the side of your cheek, but I guess us fellas with beards, <laughs> our cheeks aren't so smooth, so I have to turn into going as soft as your earlobe. And speaking of that, so educated beards, have you always, is this a, a career path that you've always chosen, Kevin, or is this something that you uh, kind of fell into by accident? Yeah, not at all. Actually, I was, I was Army for 14, 15 years of my life, and I joined basically right about out of high school, so I never grew a beard in my entire life. And uh, in 2016, after a mission in Afghanistan from like 2008, 2009, I got diagnosed with PTSD, and then I got released from the Army. So, um, I grew a beard for the very first time in my life, and I was like, yes, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah. It was terrible. It was itchy, it was dry, it was flaky, and I was like, I'm not doing this. So, I got some products at the pharmacy and uh, brought it home, and my partner's a holistic nutritionist. Okay. So, she reads the label. She's like, no, that's not going on your face. We're having a baby. Like, the baby's all against your face all the time. I was like, okay, you're right. You're right. So, I go back to the store, and I remember I bought this bottle that was like wooden lid, and it had a little leaf on it, and I brought it home, and I was like super proud. And I was like, here you go, this is really good. And she goes, no, that's not going on your face. That's even worse than the first one. So greenwashing, like in yep. the beauty industry is like a massive thing. So she's like, let me do some research and I'll make some products, because she did holistic nutrition, which is like quite a lot of research. So she did a ton of research, and then we developed our own products, and then fast forward five years, we supply about 3,500 stores. We manufacture everything in Fredericton. So it's it's quite cool to, to be a global brand now. We supply like six or seven countries. So that, No, that's fantastic. That's awesome. So the dough's right here, and it's nice and saggy. So we'll just put that off, and you'll notice that it's nice and smooth, right? And then we just put it together right there. I'm going to take a second here and just uh, kind of wash my hands. But if while I'm doing that, if you wanted to just kind of drizzle, I would say, a couple tablespoons or so, of uh, oil right onto this parchment paper yes, into that pan. Yes, chef. Focaccia bread uh, isn't afraid of olive oil. The whole idea is you want to get a nice crispy yet soft middle, and the, uh, the, f the olive oil is going to help us get that. Here we go. Perfect. Awesome. So we're going to set that right there, and then we're going to grab our dough. We're going to put that right in the middle. We're going to let this dough rest, and we'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Easy Eats. Again, we're in the Greener Village's Learning Kitchen with uh, Kevin Nebeff, owner of Educated Beards. Uh, Kevin, before the break, we were talking about your product. Um, you were saying that uh, your wife, when you guys were awaiting your newborn and all these chemicals and stuff like that, what makes your product different than uh, any other product that you would see at the market? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's actually quite similar. Like when you cook with food, like you select premium ingredients. It Absolutely, tastes better, yeah. everything works better, everything's the same. So we do the same. We search for organic ingredients that are certified organic, that are free trade, so everyone gets paid a free sa like a fair salary around the world. It's really important for us. Um, and even the container that it's housed in, like we only house our containers or our products inside glass, which eliminates the risk of leaching. So it's like essential oil eating up at plastic. Okay, yeah. So we think about all those those aspects, and I hate cheap stuff. I'd rather buy once, buy quality, and use it for a long time. Absolutely, yeah. So it's very much our model. So everything's 100% natural and organic, and uh, it really targets the skin itself and the beard. So it's not filler ingredients that are not going to be useful. Well, let's talk about that. <laughs> um, when you're talking about beard oils and stuff like that, are you treating the actual beard itself, or is it the skin underneath that you're, you're taking care of because it's hidden from everything else? Kind of both, and a lot of people are like, oh, 
beard oil is a be all end all basically that's like that's the main ingredient there the main product that you need yes and no so even at a l short length of beard that beard is going to be what's going to be at the end right so that's what's coming out so you need to nourish it right away so you nourish the skin uh, which then in return nourishes the root and stimulates the hair growth properly and reduces split ends and dead ends and and all those things and even the itch like that dreaded itch especially like in the beginning stages where your skin doesn't produce more oils we replenish those lost oils okay so yeah I usually get that every probably about once every two or three months I get the, I call it the weak itchy and if I can survive the weak itchy then the beard stays sometimes the beard gets trimmed down yeah but other than that so it's great to have you on to talk about these products because I've been grabbing some and uh, uh, my wife has been making some to try out yeah. and things like that and I go to my local market and there's a lot of vendors there that are are offering and there's some really nice products out there but definitely uh, and it's uh, awesome because yeah. it's more accepted now for for guys to take care of themselves which is, is phenomenal and when you take care of yourself you get a little bit more pride and you just feel healthier and better and it gives you like more confidence too right so but one big thing that I want to mention is a lot of guys will use shampoo like head shampoo and that's a big no-no to wash your beard because your oh skin really? doesn't produce a lot of, s of oils your scalp produces a ton of oils if you don't wash your hair four or five days it gets oily it gets mm -hmm. greasy if you wash your beard that's already dry and you're stripping away even more oils, it gets even drier. And that's usually when people are itchier, when they get out of the shower for the next two, three days, because you can't just add oil and absorb it. It takes a few days to build up, and then they're stripping the oils away again. Okay. So it's really important to build up. So that's why we have like a three-piece kit that is like step one, wash your beard with a beard wash that's meant to not strip away oils. It's heavy in oils. It's not really good for the head hair, but really good for the beard. And then you got your oil for your skin, Nourish is obviously the hair itself, but it's mostly for the skin. It should be called skin oil. And then a butter that's really going to soften. It's like a leave-in conditioner that's going to help out, like, make that beard softer. Especially with the white, it's dead hair. It's, like, got less protein to absorb oils. So mine was really, really dry, really coarse, and driving me nuts, wiry. So we're like, we need to develop something that's really going to keep the moisture in and lock it in. Um, let's get back to the focaccia. Speaking of oils and stuff like that, we've got oil on our focaccia and we have oil in the pan. So, and like you said, you're working things in. Um, now, at this point, all we're going to do now is we're just going to press the dough into the shape you want. So that's where when people say focaccia and then you're sticking your fingers in like this, you can do like this and then you can be done but I want it to be flat out. Uh, we're serving a few more people. And that's why you kind of let your dough rest, probably for about 15, 20 minutes at most. Um, you can leave it rest e up to an hour, maybe more. Cool. The m longer you rest it, the stretchier it'll get and the easier it'll be to work with because you're letting the glutens in the dough relax and then you're able to push things out just like that. And then you're gonna see there's a lot of oil, but that's okay because you want that oil because that's, again, is gonna create that crisp that you need. So all we're going to do here is we're just going to press just like that. And there we go. We uh, essentially have our focaccia right there. What we're going to do now is we're going to um, kind of uh, garnish it. So at this point, a lot of people can. Uh, I've seen a lot of people kind of make pictures in the, fo in the focaccia with your lovely herbs and things like that. But we're going to keep it really simple. We're going to make a lovely garlic focaccia. I've got this uh, cr garlic cream, and all we're going to do is just press garlic and oil. And if you'd like to, just grab some and just paint it on oh. liberally. I mean, honestly, it's as garlicky as you want it to be. So to the finger holes, I've seen yeah. that you pushed with your fingers. Is that like to get the different texture and the different heights? or Absolutely. And what it is is, is it's... Uh, it's proved uh, or it's it's risen a little bit so you want to knock some of that air out so you don't have big air pockets and it's also an aesthetic so at this point right here say if you want to have an olive focaccia um, I would grab some nice Kalamana olives some green olives and then that's when I would start pushing them into the dough just okay. like that um, and then it would give you that texture that's awesome um, I make pizza with this so at this point right here I would just put my tomato sauce I put my toppings I'd fire some cheese on and we'd be set and good to go. And in terms of the dough, how long can we make this in advance? Can we just like put it in the fridge for a day or two? A or? day or two, actually, yeah. The longer it stays in the fridge, um, the, uh, the the more flavor it'll incorporate. What it'll do is it'll it'll ferment, and a fermented dough always has a little bit more flavor. So a sourdough, those kinds of things are a fermented dough. Um, so you can 
use it right away, like, like we're doing today, or you can uh, leave it in the fridge. Not like this, but in that dough form, the ball, before we pressed it out. Okay. Just leave that in the fridge two or three days if you'd like. Uh, no more than two or three days. After that, then things start to ferment a little too far. Gotcha. And is that covered with like a Oh yeah, you cover cloth? with saran wrap and okay. you put it in the fridge. And when you put it in the fridge, what it does is it, it slows the yeast. Um, it's called retarding the, uh, the dough um, because it doesn't have the, it, it, it takes warmth and humidity to activate and warm the yeast. Right on. So we've got all our garlic. And like I said, we didn't add salt to that. So all I'm going to do now is just grab some of this sea salt and then generously Whoa, okay. put it on. And, and it's sea salt, so it's rock salt. Yeah. So it, it, it's not like we're putting too much on, and it's going to add a lovely texture to this bread. There we go. And then just to finish it all off, I've got some finishing oil that I like to use. And then I just kind of drizzle a little bit on the top, just like that. We pop that into an oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit okay. for about 25 to 30 minutes or until the bottom of your dough or your bottom of your bread is nice and crispy and there's an, and it's a nice golden brown. Cool. And you don't have to zap it with any direct heat up? No, no, you don't have okay. to broil it or anything like cool. that. It'll, it'll come, it'll, it'll crisp up and it'll, it'll be beautiful. I noticed that your mustache is curled up. Do you guys sell the wax and all that stuff too? Yeah, exactly. We do mustache waxes. We do tools also for like cutting out dead ends and split ends. And um, we do like brushes. Brush is super, super important. It's, uh, it makes it like silky smooth and it gets rid of dead skin cell. And that's what builds up between your skin and your beard. And usually it's, it's really hard to unlodge that dead skin. Um, so yeah, we take we really like educated beards started from like two factors it was like the education that we put into our products but also the education that we want to help people understand really skincare so right. do you offer any kind of uh, seminars do you have any kind of uh, like a YouTube page or anything like that so we're in the process of building our YouTube page this year that's what we're focusing on um, but we do a lot of social media content onto Instagram uh, TikTok, and reels and that kind of stuff short short film short short little videos of like tips and tricks and um, it's, it's quite amazing. We just invested in a bunch of equipment, so we're going to be able to, to scale up to the next level. I, I find that a lot of people call this bread very differently, like yeah. focaccia, focaccia. Uh, I say focaccia, like I'm very French. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, but where does this originate from? A lot of times I believe it was used to kind of as a quick meal, as, as a good lunch, something to go with a soup or a pasta or to sop up, uh, sop up the pasta at the end of the day and to use up some leftovers because there's always something in it. It wasn't just always just like that. Gotcha. So you can have it plain and then it just evolved from there. Like I was saying, I put, I turned mine into pizza. Essentially, it's not a pizza. It's a flatbread that has more garnish than it should have. But essentially, that's what it is. It's, I believe it's Italian origin. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I just started making this when I worked at uh, Pizzeria when I, in, in my travels and in my, uh, in my career. Gotcha, yeah. So there's many ways of making this and making it as complicated or as Oh, as complicated easy as, as simple a a as you want, yeah. And uh, why complicate life? Just simple, easy food is, is kind of the way we, uh, we run here at the Greener Village. So we all know that the Greener Village um, is like probably the, the largest food bank in Fredericton and that gives the most out to the community. Uh, what else happens here? My role is, well, that's exactly what it is. It's uh, people, we always call ourselves the hand up along with the hand out. We do realize that when we're giving these, these individuals boxes of food, they may not know what to do with the stuff that we give them. And especially now that we're moving into more of a fresher era, uh, we're getting more vegetables, we're getting different vegetables and different things being donated to us, uh, things can be strange for, for some people. Mm -hmm. And especially a lot of people who are coming in that are immigrating from the Ukraine, from Syria, uh, there might be some strange dishes or strange things that they see. So my job is to just kind of demystify it all and then to show people how easy it is or how to stretch that box. It's an emergency box. It should last from three to five days, but with a couple tips and tricks and a couple hints from me, you can probably get a couple more days out of it. And that's kind of what I do here for our clients at the food bank. But I also teach 
to the community. We offer different programming. Um, we offer team building. Uh, Mondays, uh, I do what's called bread Mondays. So we're not making focaccia, but we're making white bread that we're then turning around and we're handing out to the community. Oh, cool. So it's you, giving back. You give your time and you give your effort and then that effort is materialized in the loaf of bread that we then in turn give out to the client. So it's community helping community. So cool. Yeah. So cool. That's so rewarding. No, it is. It yeah. is fun. It, it really is fun. You meet a, a whole lot of neat people and you meet them where they're at. So there, I have CEOs and I've got well, poppers and princes, I guess, is the way you, right. you, you look at it. And everybody's working together. That's so awesome. Yeah. It's really cool. Like, commu the community here in Fracton is, is quite remarkable, I find. and I'm amazed every time. Yeah. yeah. And it's because of, of people and, and organizations like Greener Village, for sure. And here we go, guys. So do, do you eat this right now, like serving hot, or do you wait till it's cooled down? Well, you can serve it hot, just the way it is. You could make it a little bit thicker and kind of round it out, and you can make a big sandwich, one of those sandwiches like a muffaletta sandwich, which mm -hmm. is a really nice Italian mm -hmm. sandwich. But I like it just like this. So you're a Fredericton-based company, but do you offer your products elsewhere? Yeah, definitely. So throughout Canada and U.S., we ship anywhere to their door. But we also work with a lot of distributors. Uh, so we have products in about 3,500 locations globally right now. Wow. So across Canada, from coast to coast, uh, U.S., Turks and Caicos, Jamaica, um, Poland, and South Africa, we have uh, distributors there. And we're working on, on a couple other countries right now. And why we were able to do that is really we, we stepped up. So we went and got our Cosmos Organic Certification, which is a highest skincare standard in the world. It's European standard. And they're a lot more advanced than we are. And they're a lot stricter on ingredients and how they house ingredients too. So we got that, that and the Eco -cert Certification also, which is just another process, but it also solidifies what we do. It's really our foundation. We want to make sure that people know that we are real and that we use real ingredients. So, uh, global type market, but uh, so are you just you and your partner doing this? Or are you a team of two? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. We, we can do it just by ourselves. We, we do have a, a qu quite, a, quite a good team and it's growing uh, year after year. This has been, it's been harder with, with COVID or post COVID, I guess. It's, uh, it's been quite hard to, to hire people. A lot of people fought, now went on online jobs and not work into facilities for manufacturing. Uh, and I, I, f I find that a lot of companies are also struggling with hiring people, uh, but we do have a s very strong team. There's like seven of us. We got a, a sales rep uh, full time with us uh, that does our B2B, basically um, business to business development. Okay. And then our direct to consumer is just from our website and um, that's just from ordering our, on our website. And we do all the fulfillment. We don't have a third party logistics. We do everything in Fredericton. So we manufacture everything in Fredericton and we control all our ingredients. And then we can also, we also ship our pallets from there and our small packages also. Right on, so yeah, it seems like you guys are like super, super busy, small group. Are you looking to expand? Yeah, we're definitely gonna be expanding as we grow. So this year we're coming out with a shave line, uh, full shave line, so we supply a lot of barbershops and the barbershops trust our brand because it's so real. It's like real ingredients made out of real things and we're really challenging and becoming a new leader in, in the industry. The way we like to eat it at home is I just grab it and I just rip off a chunk. Nice. I'm gonna pass it to you. Beauty, beauty. And there we go. Nice, oh, beautiful focaccia so bread, nice and chewy and lovely. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining me today, Kevin. Same. I really appreciate it. I learned a lot about my beard and how to kind of start taking care of it better. Awesome. Thank you I've so much. learned so much about this too. Thank you so much, Chef. Thank you.